everyone, it's Hunter and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, it is so nice to meet you. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys the top five books I read while I was 25. I recently turned 26 on August 19th and I love to read books. At the time of filming this video, I've read just under 150 books in 2022 and I read about 160 in 2021. So I wanted to kind of share the books that I read from August 19th, 2021 to August 19th, 2022. That really had an impact on me. I did set myself a couple of rules whenever I was coming up with this list because otherwise I just wanted there to be some variation. So I said, I wrote my rules down right here. Um, they have to be read between birthdays, right? And then I wanted them to be different genres. I could not pick all books from the same genre. And the last rule I set for myself was not to have any repeat authors. So I had to pick my favorite book from a specific author if I loved a bunch of them. So I wanted to do just five books because narrow it down was really really difficult but I think by only picking five it helps you to see how much these books specifically meant to me especially because I have read so many. So before we get started I would love if you guys would subscribe to my channel down below and give this video a thumbs up that really helps my channel grow and now let's go ahead and get started. Okay so I'm gonna start with five and work my way up. Okay so I actually have all but one of these books in a physical copy so I went ahead and grabbed them. So the first book on this list is What you wish for by Catherine Center. I think the reason why it made it on this list is because I was so pleasantly surprised. I personally had never heard of Catherine Center before. My husband got me this book for Christmas in 2021 and like I said I'd never heard of this author before and I decided to read it. He got it because he liked the cover and I'm, I'm not gonna lie it's a beautiful cover. Uh, he said this looks like a book I would like to read and I genuinely loved it. It's about this um, school librarian. She loves her life. She's very quirky and has very colorful and just like fun things in her life. She likes to have fun. She likes to be colorful and she was inspired by a teacher at a different school that she worked at. And then one day that teacher comes to her school to become the principal. And she's so excited because she actually had quite a big crush on him whenever he worked with her before. And he is not the person that he used to be. He used to be fun and colorful and just all the things that she aspires to be. And now he's very cold and calculated and obsessed with safety and all this stuff and she kind of learns about him and why he has kind of shut down and become a different person and so she's working on trying to get him to come out of his shell in this book and while there is an element of romance I would say this is definitely just like general fiction. Like I said there's a little bit of romance which I like. I like when there is a romance thrown into it but it didn't feel like it was the basis of the story like them getting together was not like the main goal of this book but I thought thought it was beautifully written. I it was one of the first books I read in 2022 and just I was just so so pleasantly surprised by it that I had to add it to this list. So What You Wish For by Catherine Center. The next book I don't have a physical copy of so I'll put it up here. It is How to Fake It in Hollywood by Ava Wilder and I read this as an advanced reader's copy like right before it came out and I love this book so much. You have this reclusive Hollywood star who needs a career boost and then you have this actor who needs a career boost as well. She was obsessed with him growing up. He's a little bit older than her and he was like her celebrity crush growing up and one day their publicist decides to put them together into a fake relationship to boost their careers and we know what happens with fake relationships but the thing that I liked about it the most was that it talks about addiction in a very real way and how it affects people and I feel like a lot of times we see addicts as people who are, what's the word I'm looking for? We see them as people who are you know living on the streets, they're poor, they're throwing their lives away and things like that and I feel like while that can be a realistic view of addiction it shows a realistic view of addiction in light fame and how it can affect your career but how it can affect your relationships as well and I just really appreciated how real it felt as a person who has I personally haven't dealt with addiction but I've dealt with people who have dealt with addiction and just watching the personality differences between you know when they're using and when they're not is not night and day difference and I could really see the way that this author wrote that into the story really really well and it also wasn't something I was expecting from the story so I think that's maybe why I liked it. There was a lot more depth to it than a lot of romances do and honestly if you're looking for a light read that's not that's not it. I mean there's there's definitely some definitely romance like lots and lots of romance in it and it is primarily a romance novel but I think that if you're looking for something that's more fun and light and kind of a palate cleanser this is not it. It definitely deals with some really really hard things and 
I really enjoyed it because I think maybe it was unexpected to me. The next one was Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica and this book. Guys, this book was literally so good. I think it is one of the best thrillers I have ever read and this is about a woman she goes missing and then two weeks later a woman and her daughter go missing and then 11 years later the daughter shows back up and they are stuck trying to figure out what happened to the mom, what happened to the other woman, are they connected, and just everything that's associated with these women going missing. And honestly, like, there was a plot twist at the end that absolutely shook me. I was so not expecting it. And there were just so many shocking elements in this that I, it was just so good. I got finished reading it and I was like, I want to read this again because it was so good. Like, I wish that I could read this again for the first time. So good. It says, Shelby Tebow is the first to go missing. Then Meredith Dickey and her daughter Delilah vanish just blocks away from where Shelby was last seen, striking fear into their once peaceful community. After an elusive search that yields more questions than answers, the case eventually goes cold. Now 11 years later, Delilah shockingly returns. Everyone wants to know what happened to her, but no one is prepared for what they're find. And some people will stop in nothing to keep the truth buried. Literally so, so good. If you like thriller novels, this is so good. I highly recommend it. That's why it's number three on this list. Number two is uh, False Witness by Karen Slaughter. Um, I hate this fake sticker on here and I hate that people are reading her now because of um, pieces of her on Netflix, but I have been a big Karen Slaughter girl for a long time. I kind of got into Karen Slaughter maybe like 2019 um, and I have been really enjoying her books. I think she's an incredible thriller writer and her novels are super graphic. So this is definitely not for the faint of heart, but I feel like the there's like some crime in there but the the, uh, the characters are just very different in my opinion. So False Witness I think is my favorite of hers. This is a standalone so it's not part of a series but she does have two series and this one I legitimately cried. I think this takes place during COVID too um but I literally cried reading this book. Like I could not believe that I cried reading this. Um I cried in the epilogue but it I don't even know how to describe it. We have this woman I'm just gonna read the description because it's the best way to describe it. An Ordinary Life. Lee Collier has worked to hard to build a normal life. She's an up-and-coming defense attorney at a prestigious law firm in Atlanta and would do anything for her 16-year-old daughter Maddie. But Lee's ordinary life masks a dark childhood, one tarnished by secrets, broken by betrayal, and ultimately destroyed by a brutal act of violence. One of the firm's partners informs Lee that she must defend a man accused of rape. Though wary of the case, she doesn't have much choice if she wants to keep her job. When she meets the accused face-to-face, -face, she realizes that it's no coincidence that he's specifically asked for her to represent him. He knows her, and he knows what happened all those years ago. Suddenly, Lee has a lot more to lose than this case. The only person who can help is her estranged sister, Callie, the last person that Lee wants to drag into this. But with the life-shattering truth in danger of being revealed, she has no choice. Literally so good. Like I said, I cried. Karen Slaughter books are on the longer side, but I just, I just realized there's a sneak peek of her book that's coming out like next week on here. Someone's about to ring my doorbell. Ugh. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, basically our home builder. We're in a new, <laughs> we're in a new build town home, so we had some stuff that needed to be fixed for the for the builders. So anyway, that's what the person was for. But anyway, this book, ten out of ten in my book. If you like thrillers and you can handle, if you like thrillers and can handle the more graphic details of a thriller, I highly recommend this. There is some very vivid description of drug use in here, so if you have any kind of triggers, I would not recommend checking it out. But if you don't, really good one. And the last book, which is my top book. It's I. It's moved its way up to my top three of all time. Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I read this book for the first time in March and I think it is so, so good. Literally so good. And then I listened to the audiobook. I thought just the book was good. And then I listened to the audiobook and I was like, I cannot believe that I have to read other books after this one because I was just like, I had what you would call a book hangover when I read this book. I just thought it was so good. I cried listening to the audiobook. I genuinely just thought it was one of the best books I've ever read. It was heartbreaking, but it was so beautiful. And basically you have Daisy Jones, who is this, she's basically the star of the show. People love her. She is, people are drawn to her. She's very charismatic and people just love her. She's incredibly talented. And she puts out an album that does, it, it doesn't flop, but I'm not going to say it's like, it's not the next album of the year or anything because she's not writing her own music. And then you have The Six, 
Critics, who again, they put out their own music, and it, while it's good, it's it could be better. So their record label decides to throw them together into a group. They kind of collaborate at first on a single, and everyone loves it, so they become Daisy Jones and the Six, and just the the chemistry between all of the characters is incredible. Um, it is written interview style and so in the beginning of the book it is an author's note but it's not like Taylor Jenkins Reid as an author it is um it's like the author of the interviews if that makes sense so it says that some of the accounts are it says over the course of the last eight years I've conducted in individual interviews of current and former members of the band as well as family friends and industry elite the following oral history is compiled edited from those conversations as well as relevant emails transcripts and lyrics I aimed for a comprehensive approach some potential interviewees were difficult to track down some were forthcoming more forthcoming than others and some unfortunately have passed on it serves as the first and only time that these members of the band have commented on their history together. However, it should also be noted that on matters both big and small, sometimes accounts of the same truth differ. The truth often lies unclaimed in the middle. So this book is so, so good. I just, it's so good. And listening to the audiobook was just like a whole different experience that I highly recommend. If you have read this book, I highly recommend listening to it as an audiobook again, because it's just that good. Like, it's so good. I could sing its praises all day long. Anyway, those were the top five books I read when I was 25. Um, I think these were an incredible group of books to have read when I was 25 and if I didn't read any other books I'm glad I read those five and I just thought they were so good so I highly recommend I will link the books down below if you guys want to check them out they'll be on Amazon buy them I might get commission I'm not sure how it works with Kindle books honestly but I don't really care I'm just gonna link them down below so you guys can check them out if you want to and then I have I post book videos every Friday so if you guys are here for the book videos I post them on Fridays so yeah with that being said I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to subscribe before you go and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!